Hey everybody, in this episode we're going to focus on user experience. There's a few things wonky with our site that I'm going to show you. These are things I either missed or never thought of. And really nothing is displayed to the user when something's wrong. So sometimes they might be left wondering what's wrong, they don't know what to do. So, specifically, if you go ahead and delete everything, hit save, well, uh, where'd the form go? What happened? And you know, it, it seems to have done something. Um, this field may not be blank. So that's a useful error. Wouldn't it be nice if that showed up on the page and the form didn't just disappear? Another weird thing is if you go to one that doesn't exist, the delete button still exists. Well, what are we deleting exactly and why is it not doing anything? These are the kinds of things we're going to fix. And then maybe we can get some of these errors to show up on the page. So let's first talk about getting rid of this delete button on a 404. So here we are at the button, and it's not being conditionally displayed, like we have other things up here only showing up if change is true, and then other stuff only displaying if the customer is true or not found is true. So we need to do that, and we could probably just put it inside of this, only display it if the customer is true, or that the customer exists. So what we can do is we can follow this down and see where that ternary ends. And what we can do is we can just take these two lines, cut them, and put them after the button. And this is why having an extension like Prettier comes in handy, because this is going to reformat everything nice and pretty for us. Now, checking out our site, it doesn't show up on 120 ID. Let's try 12 again, or whatever ID you're working with. Delete button is still working. So that was the first problem. Now let's deal with the problem of the form randomly disappearing. So if I hit save, the form disappears. Well, what happens when we click save? So if we find save, on click, it goes to update customer. And inside of here, we are making a request. And the problem, it's getting down to this section here, and it is setting the customer to data.customer. Well, the problem is the request to the back end is not being completed properly, so we're not getting a valid customer. And then later on in our code, when we condition for the customer, this is not evaluating to true. Thus, it's not rendering the inputs or the button, which is why there's no delete here or save or cancel here either. So what we need to do is we need to check for a bad request and update accordingly. So let's go back to that function. And what I will usually do is just say, if response.okay is false with an exclamation mark there, I will throw a fit and we'll just put in here something went wrong and what we can do is we can also console log the response just to see and if you want to visualize that a little bit better in the terminal you can just put a string here so response comma response if we delete this information hit save this is the response then we're throwing the error so we just need to catch the error so down in the catch we will define a function and create a parameter e for the error console log e is e and now let's try this again so i'm going to delete that hit save and we see our error something went wrong so now that save button doesn't go away and we have the opportunity to put a new value in here and hitting save what we can do is conditionally display the error on the page so let's go ahead and set an error here we will just say set error and pass in E. Now you want to make sure E is in fact a string, uh, which I'll, I will do that in a second, but let's first define this state variable, const error and set error. Use state, and we will leave that to no default value. So now we'll look back and let's try this again real quick. We'll hit save. Okay, so we have that error in our state. What we can do is we can display it down here. So let's go down at the end of customer after our button and we will place this right here. We will check for error. If there is an error, we will display it inside of a paragraph. Otherwise, we will not display it. So we'll say no. So let's take a look. We're getting some issues. Yep. Objects are not valid as a React child, so the error is not a string. So the way we get the, the message from the error, I think is e dot 
message. And that should get the string error. So now let's go ahead and try deleting this value, hitting save, and it says something went wrong. That's awesome. The only thing we need to do now is we need to have it go away when it does correctly save. So at the end of our save function, we will find that, so update customer. If something does work, then we will say set error, and we can just say undefined. And now let's go ahead and just try this out again. So let's save, something went wrong, updated, save, and it goes away. Same thing if we try it again without a refresh, it seems to be working. Alrighty, now you do have the opportunity to be more specific with your error. Right now we have a general catch all for all responses that are not in the 200 to 299 range. You could just the same check for a specific error code as I believe we did up here if response.status is 404, you could set a different error. So just do that for any of the appropriate status codes based on what your backend API is capable of returning. Let's go through another scenario where we might not be able to connect to the backend or something goes wrong. So heading over to our backend code and we are trying to get a specific customer. Let's just raise an exception and then have parentheses there. Now we should get a server error and the page just breaks. Taking a look at the network, you should be able to see a 500 status code here. So the way you would check for something like this is you could say if response.status is 500, or you can again have the catch all, which is to say if response.ok, and then have the exclamation mark. So if something went wrong, or in other words, it's not 200 to 299, throw new error and then pass in a message here. So we'll say something went wrong, try again later. And then down after our final then, we'll have a dot catch, pass in an arrow function here, have the exception here, set error, e dot message. And then lastly, on success, we will remove the error. So set error, to undefined. And inside of this if response okay, I want to console log as well. So I'm just going to temporarily leave a console log with the response. And we will just say response. So we should see in the terminal response. And we can take a look at that. I just realized one thing that the error is not showing up because the location where we defined the error is actually inside of the condition for if the customer exists. And this obviously is not the case in this situation. So we probably want to take this error out and have it in its own standalone conditional. So that's going to be a lot better. And now we should get that error message show up. Last thing, let's just go fix our back end. We don't need to do that. And there we go. Our application should be good to go. It's still pretty ugly, but a lot of the functionality is there. And I think everything is working, but let me know if you've caught anything else that's weird. We wrote in a lot of lines of code for this, 150 some. So there's definitely some things I've missed, I'm sure. Last thing I would tend to do is just get rid of console logs. I don't really like to leave those in for uh, longer than I need them, just for testing sake. As we all know, console logs are the best way to debug and test your application. So. Let's just go ahead and get rid of these. This is actually another spot where we would want to show the error message on the delete button. So if there's a problem deleting it, we can just say set error e dot message and then on success before we navigate. We wouldn't really need to update the error because we're navigating. Gah, I don't know, I'm splitting hairs now because I guess for 
consistency sake, I would do this, but it's kind of pointless because we're navigating literally right after, so you probably don't need that line at all. Thank you so much for sticking with this video. We've gotten a lot more into the details here and I'm kind of tired of working on this section. So what we'll probably do is style the application next just to make it not hideous. Just enough to allow us to look at it without wanting to throw up. That'll be good for me. So let's do that next and then we will move on to something new. Thank you for watching. Peace out. I'll see you in the next one.